is up y'all welcome back to my channel Sarah Deputy. today i'm going to be reacting to all eight states and territories in australia ranked worst to best i don't know too much about australia i know that i know the states i know they got six states um but other than that i don't know too much oh and i know that a lot most you know live on the outskirts or really kind of like more of the east side of australia um but other than that, I don't really know too much about Australia. Um, so let's see what are the worst and best parts of it. So let's see. Do you love to curse, enjoy large empty swaths of extremely hot desert, and want to increase your risk of skin cancer? Well, then you might be a feral camel, in which case you're likely already in Australia. And if you're not, why haven't you moved here? With gorgeous beaches, incredible cities, great healthcare and education, and some of the most unique ecosystems and wildlife not found anywhere else on Earth, the land down under is one of the best countries to live in. But while this well, giant beautiful. island continent country, Conanuntry, is around the same size as the contiguous United States, it has just one thirteenth the population. And over half of the wow. 25.9 million Australians reside in just three cities. But doesn't Australia have like six states? and two major territories? Why don't people spread out more? Well, Mr. Camel, because most of the country gets so hot. I'm gonna, uh, he was about to say because it gets so hot, but isn't it like mostly desert? I guess that kind of both go together. Hot that you'll end up looking like this guy if you spend five minutes outside. So unless you actually are one of the one million feral camels that call the outback home, you probably want to stick with 85% of Australians who live within 50 kilometers of the coast. Doesn't like every state touch the ocean though? How do I know which is best? Find out as we rank all eight Australian states and territories from worst to best. <laughs> and let's hit 5,000 likes for a video on the 10 best cities in Australia. Number eight. Actually, we're gonna start off with a quick honorable mention. The external territories. That's right, Norfolk Island, Christmas Island, the Cocos Islands, and a few other islands that no one lives on. I didn't forget about you. Now don't get me wrong. These aren't terrible places to live and are breathtaking with plenty of endemic species and extravagant landscapes. Christmas Island's nickname is actually Australia's Galapagos due to its unique red crabs, booby birds, flying foxes, and hundreds of other animals and fauna flying found throughout foxes. the tropical jungle and surrounding coral reef and the largest and most inhabitable of these islands norfolk island is home to the tallest pine trees in the world beautiful beaches and rolling pastures and some of the rarest birds if you don't mind a very slow-paced lifestyle with few modern conveniences and most things being more expensive as they have to be shipped in the external territories might well, seem like paradise <laughs> but considering they all have a combined population of only around 5,000, the extremely isolated lifestyle isn't for most actual number eight, Northern Territory. If you're strictly looking to rake in the dough and don't mind the lack of infrastructure or seclusion from the rest of the country, the Northern Territory might be for you. The median household income is the third highest of any state or territory at 115 grand, and the median home value is the lowest at just 515 grand. Plus, Ooh. there's no property tax. But remember how I said a lot of Australia is uninhabitable? Well, a huge chunk of the most uninhabitable land is here. The southern half of the territory has a climate similar to the Sahara Desert, and while Darwin and the coast is a bit more livable with tons of rainfall during the wet season, it also gets very hot and humid, and that rain often turns into cyclones and extreme flooding. So despite accounting for 17.5% of the country's landmass, less than 250,000 residents, or 1% of Australia, actually lives in the NT. And it's the only state or territory which had a net population decrease over the past year. But the lack of people is also why many love living here. From Litchfield and Kakadu say. to Uluru and Watarka National Parks, the territory is home to so much stunning wide open wilderness that you can experience all to yourself. Although you might not want to be too alone, because not only does the Northern Territory have the most saltwater crocodiles in Australia, oh, yeah, it's also by that. far the most dangerous state or territory, with a violent crime rate 323% above the national average. Jeez, Number lot. seven, South Australia. While the Northern Territory is home to some of the highest wages in the nation, South Australia has the second lowest median household income at just $98,500 and the highest unemployment rate at 4.4%. 
But if you're someone who prefers the simple life and community over vibrancy and wealth, the Festival State is a wonderful place to settle down. It's home That's to so nice. many charming suburbs and beach towns, over 5,000 kilometers of pristine coastline, the best wine in the country, and hardly any crime. And with below average fuel, grocery, and utility costs, and a median home value of just 565 grand, South Australia That's is so actually expensive. the cheapest Jesus. state. And Adelaide is the cheapest That's capital. Cheapest? Sure, Adelaide's also likely the most boring city with over a million residents, and a bit behind the times with supermarkets still closing at 5 p.m. on weekends for example, but that's also by design. Adelaiders love that their home offers all of the amenities of a city, with great food, museums, parks, festivals, and a few unique attractions like the Adelaide Central Market, while still maintaining its small- Honestly, so far it seems pretty nice, but I just can't- like, the median pay is 98000 That's just Town so charm with much hardly money. any traffic, Jeez. and where everyone knows everyone. Not to mention, it's easy to navigate with no toll roads and a beautiful beach or waterfall hike being just a 20 minute drive from the city center. Number 6. Queensland. Queensland is Australia's most popular holiday destination, and for I good like, reason. Victoria's it's like incredibly safe, has like the that. most national parks, Victoria, and with scenery as diverse as the Great Barrier Reef, Daintree Rainforest, Porcupine Grand Gorge, Daintree. and <laughs> Lamington, Girwin, Garingan, under a volcanic Blackdown Tablelands, and Great Sandy National Parks. Down. Not to mention the only Everglades ecosystem outside of Florida. I do want to go to Brisbane. I would want to go just because I was a huge uh, Crocodile Hunter fan. Um, so I would love to go see the zoo, but yeah. Uh, it's debatably the most beautiful state. And if you prefer a more chill vacation, the Sunshine State also offers plenty of theme parks and resorts in the Gold Coast and over 13,000 kilometers Ooh, of jaw-dropping beaches. So while many used to only holiday here, that's quickly changing as more people learn of Queensland's exceptional small cities and towns. In fact, it's now the fastest growing state and one of only two states where over half the population doesn't live in the capital. And it's not because Brisbane sucks. It's it's actually often ranked as the most livable city in Australia, as it's not nearly as congested or expensive as Sydney or Melbourne, while still offering legit big city amenities and experiencing yes. rapid growth, especially with the Olympics coming in 2032. But while Queensland's economy is the second fastest growing of any state, it still has some catching up to do with the third lowest median household income of just $105,000. Because of this, and the fact that the housing market is booming with a median home cost of 788 grand, the Sunshine State has the highest poverty rate at 13.5%. Number 5. Tasmania Tasmania feels nothing like the rest of Australia, and Don't that's because like it isn't. An there. island located around 200 kilometers Jeez. south of the mainland, the smallest state by both size and population is home to so many otherworldly and unique landscapes and species that... not found anywhere else. Not to mention, it rarely ever gets hot and has the cleanest air on Earth. But not only is Tasmania an adventurous paradise with places like Cradle Mountain, Mount Field, and the Bay- I think I would want to go there, or live there at least. The fire is all being a so short far. drive from pretty much anywhere on the island. It's also home to so many delightful small towns with some of the friendliest people you will ever meet. And the capital, Hobart, punches well above its weight with tons of history and beautiful architecture, great restaurants, bars, and cafes, and Mona, one of the best museums in the country. Sure, there's little in terms of bustling city life, but if you're looking to slow down and relax while being surrounded by unspoiled nature, Tasmania is perfect. Well, if you're retired perfect. or work online. Because while the economy is currently the fastest growing, the median household income is still the lowest at just $89,600. I like how he's saying that these are lowest, but here, I think, like, the median, like, uh, pay here is, like, fifty-five or 60000 Unemployment rate? So, like, jeez. Is 4.3%. At least the cost of living isn't too bad, with a median home price of 691 grand, plenty of cheap high quality produce, and low energy. That's, that's so, like, more expensive than here. Bills that's due to most crazy. of the island running on hydroelectricity. Number four, 
New South Wales. Ah, uh, Australia's oldest and most populated state. Home to Sydney, the most populated yeah, city. So but while Sydney's big city amenities, multiculturalism, high quality of life, and beautiful beaches and harbors speak for themselves, this great state is so much more than just its capital. New South Wales spans over 800,000 square kilometers and is packed with 18 diverse bioregions ranging from sandy deserts to lush rainforests, rugged mountains, rolling hills, grasslands, rivers, wow. and coasts. Wow, a little bit of everything yeah. in that Did one. you know this, this, and this are all within a two-hour drive of Sydney? And if both yeah, big city life and all. serene scenery aren't your jam, there's also no shortage of incredible mountain or beach towns, as well as one of the best small cities in Newcastle. As a whole, New South Wales is likely the most balanced province and truly offers something for every type of lifestyle. Then why the heck is it only number four? Well, because it's bloody expensive, with the highest median home cost of $1.22 million. Now to be oh. fair, Sydney does have an excellent and diverse what? economy, so wages across the state aren't bad with a median household income of 114 grand and the lowest unemployment rate of just 2.9%. But living in Sydney also means terrible traffic, everywhere being crowded, and some of the worst nightlife for a major city. Number 3. The Australian Capital Territory Covering less than 2,400 square kilometers and consisting of just Canberra, its suburbs, and Namadji National Park, it's no surprise that many Australians never even think of visiting the place. And that's honestly a shame, because sure, Canberra isn't exactly the most exciting city, seeing as it was entirely planned with the sole purpose of serving as Australia's capital, but it's still one of the most livable cities in the world. With the second lowest crime and unemployment rate in the country, the highest median household income at 150 grand, and by far the lowest poverty rate of just 5.4%, Cambrians have very little to worry about. Especially since they're close to so many gorgeous I mountains with the view. beautiful Malangalo River running right through town. But while That's the ACT pretty. checks all the statistical boxes, a lot of the city just feels empty with nothing to do if you don't know any locals. The CBD is mostly fields, office buildings, and roundabouts. And while there are walkable areas with shops and restaurants, such as Braddon, Canberra feels a lot more like a collection of spread out suburbs with a few town centers than an actual city. Although, since it is the capital, there are a ton of excellent museums, galleries, and gardens. But a fair warning, Canberra is one of the few Australian cities which gets a true four seasons, meaning the winters actually get cold. Number two, Victoria. When you think of Victoria, you probably only think of Melbourne, aka the true cultural capital of Australia yeah, with the best coffee Victoria. on earth. Seriously, prove me wrong. But while it's nearly impossible to get bored in Melbourne with its outstanding music and art scene and so many bustling alleyways filled with trendy bars, restaurants, clubs, and cafes, the Garden State is also so much more than just the hipster haven. From skiing in Falls Creek to the penguins of Phillip Island to the stunning ridges of Grampians National Park and cascading waterfalls and rainforest. I like how each state has like a bunch of different, you know, views like you have just like the city then you can go to the mountains you can go skiing you have so much in one area of yara ranges and otway national parks victoria like, i have to drive at, to get a, a, a decent mountain i'll have to probably what tennessee is probably the closest and that was like a 10 hour drive that i have to get, do to get to tennessee um yeah, and then you could, like, what was it? Um, New South Wales. Was it that? Or no. Yeah, I think it was New South Wales where everything was in, like, a two-hour drive. I mean, that would be nice. They only account for 3% of Australia's landmass, but there is no shortage of sensational scenery. Not to mention, it's by far the safest state and home to the Great Ocean Road, the most beautiful drive in the country. But 75% of Victoria does live in Melbourne for a reason. With a stellar job market, world-renowned universities, tons of history, a hip and accepting culture, an excellent public transit, nightlife, and infrastructure, it makes uh, sense that Victoria's capital want. is growing faster than Sydney and will likely eclipse its population by 2050. Especially since it's cheaper. Although it is still pretty darn expensive, with the statewide median home price being 966 grand. 
Oh, and did I mention that Melbourne can get four seasons in one hour? Yeah, <laughs> one time the temperature dropped 10 degrees Celsius in three minutes. Now, before we get Jeez, to number one, make sure you leave a quick. like and subscribe and let me know what you think the best state or territory is and why. But without further ado, number one, Western Australia. Bigger doesn't always mean better. But Australia's largest state by total area, accounting for nearly one third of the country, is also the best. Like Surrounded people. by 21,000 square kilometers of captivating coast, Western Australia is home to so much enchanting, untouched wilderness. But the best thing about living here is that it's still incredibly affordable with a median home value of just 630 grand, while also having the second highest median household income of 116 grand. Now, this is mainly due to an abundance of mining jobs, which aren't necessarily the most stable, but Perth's job market is growing and diversifying too. And speaking of Perth, it's likely the most underrated capital with a hip music and art scene in Fremantle, excellent suburbs and beaches, solid public transit, above average nightlife and restaurants, and a relaxed, stress-free lifestyle. Outside of the state's extreme isolation, with Perth actually being the most isolated big city in the world, there's just not much wrong with Western Australia. And that's why it's our best place to live in this fine country. He says that Western Australia is the best state to live in. If you live in Australia, let me know what's the best state in your opinion. I thought Victoria just because I, you always hear of Melbourne. I didn't think it would be Western Australia just because I know that least amount of people probably live there especially like two million people and that's a huge state to only have like two million people in um but i would have thought western australia my pick from this video my favorite would probably be tasmania it, it just fits i would think fits me so if i have to move to australia i probably would pick tasmania it just seems the nicest they all seem pretty nice to live in for the most part I hope you enjoyed this video and like always there's more to come and I'll see you in the next one.